Hmm, I wonder why half of the school hates you. You're a racist. You came and deny it. You know you are. You say you don't like black people. You say the N-word all the time. It's even on text. You came and deny that. You have, like, the worst personality. You act like you're everything. You're all that. I don't like making these videos. Like, why would you make a video like that? Saying when half of the school hates you for no reason. I don't drink soda, mm -hmm. no but I still pop. Oh. Why would you call the police on an eight? Instead of doing what you just did right here, coming down here and with the police and talking to me okay. as a parent, what responsibility does Jaden have as an eight year old kid in the street for a police officer to pull up to him on the street because you feel that he at eight is doing something illegal? It's an evil world we live in. By sort of setting a an idea that this will be a safe space for this conversation. It signals to those who might not have those experiences, hey, this is an area where I maybe need to take a second look to be a good ally, to be a good peer. And we have to wait for someone who has experienced um, sexual violence to come forward and ask for a content warning when we know that one in four women um, in college will go through this. Um, when we when we refuse to affirmatively do these things to affirmatively make our classrooms safer for people we're pretending that people from marginalized communities are invisible and that they're not there um and i think that that's a, a problem that's stupid use your common sense okay yes yeah, I'd John. Be happy to um so i i think it's it's helpful to take the accommodationist perspective and we certainly all want people to feel that the classroom is open to them. We don't want people coming to the classroom and being afraid. Um, but first, I would question, is there, any, is there any evidence or reason to think that giving content warnings or trigger warnings actually will, will do this? Um, as a psychologist, I, I've been looking into this. Um, and the more you label things as potentially threatening, the more they develop a certain power to actually threaten. <clears throat> So think about it this way. I, I teach classes in the business school here. Suppose I took my students on field trips all over New York. Um, but every time we went to the Bronx, I said, now, today, we're going to the Bronx. Just want to let you know, we'll have an ambulance with us, we'll have police protection, but don't worry about it, we're going to the Bronx. And I, just, and I only do that for the Bronx. What are people going to conclude about the Bronx? Now, if there was evidence that these warnings actually helped people get over PTSD, then we'd have to balance various things. But there isn't. And the the, the uh, therapists that I talked to, the people who study PTSD, were unanimous in saying that if someone has PTSD, the last thing you want to do is shield them from small reminders. In fact, the only way to get over the Pavlovianly conditioned fear is to let them exp be exposed to small things, and then nothing bad happens to them, and that's how the fear subsides. Uh, it's, it's a soft, cookie-cutter generation. And it's only going to get softer, bro. That's why, bro, like, we literally we literally just got to stay focused on the goal. We, we just got to stay focused on the grind, bro. Because if we if we put our head up and look around, like, it's, bro, it's deteriorating in front of our eyes. Come on, bro. Subscribe and join the mafioso. Stay blessed, G. Yeah. <laughs>